From downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current with John Baldino. WQPX invites you to join John and his guests as they explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Now, let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current this week, folks. I'll be your host, DJ Rock and Roll, along with my partner, Amber Cresta. So, Amber, what we got going on this week? Who's coming in? We got Nancy Reese here this week. Isn't she from the NEPA Animal Adoption Network? She is. She's here to tell us about her organization, how it works, well, a couple things about it. Okay. Well, I was very, because I seen her coming in, I was very interested. I seen she had some animals with her. Did she call that guy, what was it, she called him? Sir? Sir William. Sir William. Oh, Sir seemed, William. Yeah, he seemed like a really interesting cat. So you guys definitely want to stay tuned. You get to check out. And Sir William and, and Nancy Reese from the NEPA Animal Adoption Network. And we'll be going into a whole thing. She'll show you how she traps the cats, how she takes care of them. She'll give you some donation information. And a lot of people in the city need to make sure that they go onto her website and donate because she's doing a great thing out here. And this will be your first chance to get to meet Amber Crystal, who is an, an incredible artist that's just going crazy all over the city with different projects. You got the NEPA, girl, and Girls of NEPA calendar and everything coming out soon, along with several singles that I've been producing for her. So you'll get an opportunity to meet her and Nancy Reese and the NEPA Animal Adoption Network. And of course, you get to hang out with me, DJ Rock and Roll. So come on back and we're going to get started. All right, guys? I want you to know, life is about more than just surviving. There is happiness. It's time to stop just surviving and start living. Find out how. Go to yourlifeyourvoice.org or call anytime, 1-800-448-3000. Welcome back to Northeast Current this week. I'm here with a very special guest, Nancy Reese from the any, any, Northeast Pennsylvania Animal Adoption Network. I always say NEPA. But how are you doing today, Nancy? Good. How are you doing? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Life is good. So I'll, I wanted to personally thank you for the work that you do in the city with the stray animals. I, I live in North Scranton, and I know I see a lot of stray cats and stuff. So I just personally wanted to thank you from my perspective for the work you do with the animals. Can you explain to the people a little bit about uh, you know what the, what the Adoption Network does? And Sure. Uh, NEPA Animal Adoption Network, uh, Northeast PA Animal Adoption Network, uh, was created in 2007 by me, um, originally just for my love of animals, and um, you know we were doing lost and founds of pets, and um, basically you know animals that needed homes or so it or was kind of like adoption. it was kind of like you were finding lost animals and re reuniting them with their owner kind yes, of yes yes okay, okay. and. Um, basically uh, lost and founds and any animals that were for adoption or you know also to promote uh, adopting rather than shopping uh, through shelters okay. um, because of the overabundance of stray animals and animals in general oh. um, so it kind of escalated to where we are today with <laughs> um, you know street cat rescue and trap new to release um, amongst other things that we do, uh, so, animal so welfare. When you uh, let me get this right now, when you say street cat rescue, do you mean you actually go out in the street yourselves? Because when you came in, you had the traps and things with you, and I was very, you know, uh, my interest was piqued by that. You actually <laughs> go out into like old homes and stuff like this and find the cats yourselves? Yeah. Well, um, the area which people are really unaware of is, you know crawling with cats. <laughs> uh, there are stray cats everywhere. Um, people, you know, they're, they're feral cats or they're just, you know, a person's cat that will either, they've been abandoned by their owners or, you know, people do let them outside unfixed, therefore creating more of a problem with the strays uh, and street cats Okay, in our now, area. I've heard that term feral most of my life for feral cats. I've never r really known the true definition of what a feral cat is. So what exactly does that mean when you say feral cat? Feral cats are unsocialized cats uh, by humans. Um, so does that mean they don't socialize with humans or other cats or anything? Or uh, they anybody? do socialize with other cats. Um, they socialize well with other cats. It's amazing to actually see feral cats in their own surrounding. 
um, playing with each other, acting like completely normal cats, except for the fact they are not socialized with humans. Um, they've never been touched by a human. Um, obviously, they do live in the city, so you know most have seen humans, you know, walking by, and you know you'll okay. see the cats that'll you know run but away and take will, off, and you, you know you can't get, touch them. Okay, um, you won't get close <laughs> enough to pet that cat. Yeah, basically. I mean you could come. Some of them will, will trust a certain amount and come even a foot away from you, but you still can't touch them. Okay. Um, you know, so they are pretty much unsocialized okay. cats. So that, and, that stem uh, from domesticated cats, um, where we, the problem we, originally. Uh, you know, started that, okay. Yeah. So you're saying the parents are domesticated, and then they go. The kittens wind up being feral. Yeah. Okay. Or and then the whole cycle continues. And I'm guessing feral that cats, yeah. that's coming from somebody that thought they were ready to have a cat in the home. The cat had kittens. They were unprepared to take care of six or seven kittens, and neglected the kittens until the point they either got, all got away from the home and became feral. Basically. Right. That's how that happens. Or other time. situations that can occur. Okay. Um, so you know, how long has the, uh, the Adoption Network been in existence? And uh, since 2007. You, um, must have, you, must, you must really <laughs> love animals. Like I do love animals. And you um, have a history I've, of working with not just cats? I've, yep. I, right now I pretty much specialize in feral cats. Um, I do have a history of working with animals. Um, Wildlife <laughs> to um, exotics to really? now the like domesticated snakes, uh, snakes alligators, snakes. venomous snakes, yeah. uh, <laughs> See, I'm scared lions, of tigers, giraffe, uh, really? you know, different animals. You ever uh, been face sort. to face with yeah. a lion? Or I've been face to face with lions, yes. Wow. Yep, I've touched the lion. Wow. All right. <laughs> um, I love all cats, uh, I love all animals. I've been I've loved animals and, you know, have talked to stray animals since I was, you know, a little and, okay, yeah. you know, probably about five years old when I saw my first stray dog and, you know, I, okay. I remember being really young and singing to this stray dog on the sidewalk and, <laughs> <laughs> so and nothing was right? last, but of course, you know, I was five, I didn't really know, you know, what to do except for pet him and, okay, <laughs> and sing right. to him. <laughs> all right, so, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm imagining that this, this has to be has to cost a lot really to try to do all of this stuff it does uh, can, is how can people donate and do their part especially the city residents the people that live in the mm. areas where the cats are prevalent how can they donate well i mean uh we, like i said we are a 501c3 uh registered nonprofit charitable organization uh, we do have a website www.nepaanimaladoptionnetwork.com um, we do have another uh, website coming up soon, um, which uh, you could go to the www.nepaanimaladoptionnetwork.com to get connected to the new site, and you could donate uh, through PayPal uh, with a Perfect. credit card or Perfect. you know whatever. You hear that, people? Uh, <laughs> Especially if you live in an area where you know personally that you have strays and stuff in the area. Nancy's out here working in this heat. It's 100 <laughs> degrees outside. She's carrying around traps. You know, literally in her time, spending her time to try to help out. So we would really appreciate it if you could go to www.nepaanimaladoptionnetwork.com. You can donate with your MasterCard, your Visa, through PayPal, <laughs> however you need to do it. Please take the time out and do that right now. If you have a friendly cat that's right outside your door and you can't do anything else for the cat except for maybe fix the cat. There are low-cost uh, spay-neuter options available to them where they could take the cat to be fixed, um, at least so it will okay. stop breeding. Now, will the, SP, will the local SPCA be able to do something like that, or do you need a more specific organization um, or a veterinary doctor? Our local shelter does offer vouchers uh, for dogs and cats um, okay. for spaying and neutering of, you know, Okay, pet, so pet cats and dogs, and also you know strays and ferals. So if you're willing to have the cat taken care of or your dog taken care of, there are places you can go that will help free the cost. Right, and there is uh, the Eastern PA Animal Alliance EPAA, which does low cost spaying and neutering, and That's they do E N E P A Animal Alliance. No, nope. low cost spaying and neutering. Eastern PA. <laughs> Eastern PA. Okay. E P A A. Yep. E E A A. E P A. All right. <laughs> Their number is 570-994-5846, or you can go to www.epaaonline.com 
and they do offer uh, $35 spay neuter specials for feral and stray cats. She's like an encyclopedia. Uh, so you can, it, it is cheap, you know, it's, it's, you know, put the coffee money away or, you know, beer money, whatever you got to do to a couple of weeks help out your stray yeah. cat. You know, I always okay. recommend if, if one cat is fixed, that's you're saving hundreds more. Um, All right. Well, I always believe a, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So what are some of the things that you would suggest to people who may be considering becoming a pet owner? Like it's some of the unexpected things that they may run into that they need to take a look at before they, you know, so you don't, you're not chasing their animal around right, too right. much after they get well, it. Well, that's, yeah, and I do a lot of that, um, especially up in the hill section. For instance, um, you know, a I lot know, of college students will yeah. get the kitten or the puppy, and, you know, then they can't keep them after they move. And a lot of times the cats, the cats do end up out on the streets when they move. Um, so what I recommend if, as a new pet owner, if you're looking into adopting or you know, getting a new puppy or a kitten is, you know, adopt, don't shop. Um, there's plenty out there, hundreds, thousands across, you know, the whole world are dying every single day um, because of the overbreeding. So definitely make sure, you know, one, you, you can have a cat or a dog and for the remainder of its life. You're, you know, they can live, you know, 10 years to 20 years, cats or dogs. Um, and make sure you're financially able to afford to fix the animal, get the animal to the veterinarian, start the series of vaccinations that they need. Um, a lot of times people will take in the stray kitten or they will get a puppy and not realize that they do have to take the animal to the veterinarian to start the vaccines. Um, and then a lot of the complaint is, I can't afford it. People will go to the pet store and buy a purebred puppy and then come to me and say, I can't afford to fix my dog, or I can't um, afford but to they could afford, that. you know, the $800 or the $1,200 it cost to buy the puppy in the first place. So, you know, regardless, animals do need to be spayed and neutered. Um, I don't look at them as um, money-making profit schemes. Um, okay. A lot of people will, oh, just, buy them and breed yeah, them. they'll just want to breed them to, you know, make more money off of them. I don't agree with the just one litter. One litter to me is way too many litters. Um, and like I said, animals are dying every single day at the shelter, um, shelters everywhere because of the overbreeding and people, uh, backyard breeders and other breeding that may occur due now, to. I don't want to paint everybody with, a, and with a broad brush. There are some people that legitimately love their sure. animals and do everything they can to take care of them. Sure. What are some of the things that those people can do to keep from accidentally losing their animal. You know, sometimes a cat, a newer, especially you get a newer cat, he may sure. get out and not know his way back home. Is there any right. particular thing you can do to kind of make your house or do put something in the house that the cat will always be able to get back to or, well, I or do, any animal? You know, e animal. even in general, when I do adopt out um, a kitten or a cat, any animal, I do recommend that, you know, they do put the animal into a separate room for, you know, a week or two. This way they do get used to their surroundings. They get used to their new owners. Um, after that, you know, if they do have children or if you're having a party or a family get together, I do recommend placing the animal in, a, in that separate room to keep the animal safe. This way, uh, nobody accidentally leaves open the door, and then, you know, kitty is gone, and, <laughs> you know, okay, then okay, or okay. the dog gets out and it's running around the neighborhood. Um, I recommend microchipping um, and tags, ID tags on your animal. Now, I've heard a lot about that. Is there anywhere locally or the same places that help you with spade and neutering yes. can help you with the microchipping? Sure. Uh, yeah, um, you could even go to, you know, your local shelter uh, do offer microchips uh, for your animals, so you could get your pet microchipped. Uh, your local veterinarian, they will do microchipping. Um, the low-cost spay neuter clinics that uh, you know I, I specifically before. work okay. with, uh, the EPAA. Um, I also work with Bunker Hill uh, Vet Clinic. They do also do uh, Feral Fridays, low-cost spaying and neutering as well. There are options available. Okay. Now, I was very honored to play in the last <laughs> case. Cat, uh, Stray Cats Rock event that you had at the New Penny. Sure. It was a, <laughs> it you. was a ball. If you didn't get a chance to come out and enjoy, it, you really missed something great. But you're in luck on my birthday. We're having <laughs> another one. So please tell the people we got an event. We have an event coming up. Right, uh, August 11th at the New Penny Lounge uh, in North Scranton on North Main Avenue. 
Uh, we are going to be having um, it's like a rock the cat box, three cats rock type okay. thing. Um, it is kitten season. Okay. <laughs> so, raffles, prizes. Yeah, raffles, prizes. We're going to have some bands. Um, so I'll definitely, be there. <laughs> it definitely helps us uh, with the new kittens that we've been rescuing off the streets to, you know, get them going with their vaccinations and their wormings and everything they need to get started uh, spaying and neutering and all right. everything they need. <laughs> yeah, the, the last one was the last one was fantastic. I hope you did very well there. The last one and it helped you get get through, you know, I, I, I can't imagine the yeah, cost and it probably costly. runs through money like, yeah. It's, it's yep, cool. you never know what you're going to rescue. Um, I will randomly, you know, stop my car and rescue so animals off the street. if people want to donate like food danger. and stuff like that, can they bring that directly to you? Is that? Um, yep, you could, on, off of my website, you could um, write to us, uh, you know, through the email nepaanimal at aol.com. And um, I could, you know, give the address yes, of the sir. location. Uh, we desperately it. need kitten food, uh, okay. cat food, you cat litter, uh, sheets, blankets, humane traps, medium dog crates, um, anything that you could think of, paper towels, cleaning products, uh, we can use it. Okay. So we're always in need. Um, we always, you know, have new kittens and cats coming in off of the streets um, that we're rescuing. Uh, most recently, we had, I, I rescued a kitten down by the Radisson. Um, really? Right Yeah, there? right on that little expressway up against the concrete barrier. Um, I had just gotten onto it with, you know, the double lane is. And, and you spotted the kitten? I am, <laughs> I have a cat radar wow. at, at all times. Like, <laughs> I could see them, like, straight across oh the highway. I, I rescued them right directly off of 81. So, wow, yeah. Is... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're not done with you net, Nancy. We're going to bring in the table, and we have... We, we have a great treat for you. We have, she's gonna show us how the traps and things actually work. We're gonna bring out one of the animals for, that's up for adoption. You guys are gonna take a look at him and we're gonna do a little bit more. We'll be right back. More to come as Northeast Current continues after this. Stay tuned. Taste, feel, listen, breathe, dance, branch, splash. Open your door. It's your nature. Explore. Learn more. Visit NatureExplore at ArborDay.org. In three, two, one. All right, guys. Welcome back to Northeast Current. I told you we had a very special treat for you today. Nancy has brought along some of the traps and things that she uses to catch the cats when she's out in the neighborhood and out in the homes now. Nancy, these these some nasty looking things. I know <laughs> I, I mean I know that you deal with the animals in a strictly sure. humane fashion, but I mean sure. these things look rough. They do. They do look scary. Um, you know, I too at first was afraid of the trap. Um, <laughs> I mean it's, even it's a brush very... even a brush, like this, you put this on him. <laughs> she put this on you, man. Aww. Oh, that's more for long hair cats. I just oh. brought that just to say. Okay, so uh, basically, when we're trapping, uh, humanely trapping cats um, and doing trap neuter release, um, we <laughs> we will set up at our locations. Um, like I said, we do encourage uh, the community to get involved with trap neuter release. Um, if they do have one or two cats, even up to five cats, um, they're more than welcome to contact me. I do have this stuff available to borrow. Um, so, and I could explain the process to people to get started. Um, so basically, uh, now this little guy here, he was trapped. Uh, he came actually from West, the corner of West Market Street and Church Ave over in North Scranton along with his whole family. And when we're trapping cats, basically, you know, I do work, I do have a job. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask you, like, is this, this, this thing must be paying up well. <laughs> Oh, believe me. Um, no, but we, you know, in between my work schedule, um, you know, before work, I will go set up traps and then in between check them. And then after work, I go back and I'll pick them up and then I take them to a remote location. Um, so basically, when you're trapped due to release, if you want to st uh, trap cats, wait, you wait, would. Wait, wait a minute. You, when you say take them to a remote location, you mean if a cat is too feral to be domesticated again? Or? No, I mean, uh, I take the traps, the cats in the traps to a remote location oh, okay. uh, to get ready for their vet appointment the next day so before so you don't blindly trap you always want to make sure you have a veterinary appointment oh, um, okay you, you know you, and okay. you trap the day before or else you're stuck with a feral cat in the trap and you don't know how to get the cat out of um, okay. <laughs> luckily for me I know so how to do that, but it, it is a very dangerous thing I was gonna say um, do the vet cats, put them to sleep 
Uh, they don't, not to sleep. No, they um, they do give them <laughs> a sedative. Or they give them a sedative to you know knock them out, and then uh, usually through the bars. And then the, once they're you know a little groggy, then they'll take them out of the okay. trap. Um, but basically, you do want to have your veterinary appointment scheduled and then trap the day before. The cats cannot be kept in these traps longer than 24 hours. Um, and when you're why why can't they be because of this thing hurt their paws on the bottom? Uh, no, because of um, urinating and okay, going to yeah, the bathroom, bathroom um, like the it can you know cause issues uh, inside of them okay. you know like uh, okay. constipation and stuff okay. so basically when you're going to do trap neuter release you want to set up your traps uh you know the day before or the night before whatever you're more comfortable uh you know people seem to know their cat schedule the stray cats the feral cats schedule if they're feeders and um also with you know a lot of the bigger colonies i work at i've worked with uh as many cats as up to 100 in a colony um, with through trap neuter release and rescuing and either relocation to uh, you know farms that I've worked with that feed their cats okay. that have a system down or socializing and adopting them out I'm able to get some of these colonies down to you know more reasonable size uh, <laughs> okay. but basically what you're gonna do is you would, uh, there's different styles of traps um, some of them are you know like this this is you could buy the two-in-one traps uh, this is, I, I refer to as a kitten trap. It's a small animal trap. This is more like a uh, raccoon's uh, groundhog trap. So you would set up, you want to have a sheet on hand um, to cover the trap immediately when the cat goes in the trap because they do kind of spaz out a little. They're trapped. They're not sure what to do. They're not sure what's going on. So um, once the animal goes into the trap, you do want to set up your food in the back um, not to interfere with the the um, mechanism here. Yeah, like so you would set the can away from it. Okay. Um, so they have to get completely over top of this yep, part. Yeah, okay. they would have to step on this and then set off okay. the trap. But I usually try to leave a sheet right here. Um, sometimes they get a little weirded out from the sheet, so you could take the sheet away as long as you're going to monitor your trap. And then this way you could just directly cover up the cat once the cat is trapped. And how does so and, and it... How does this, what do you just So basically, that? we're going to have little Sir William okay. here. <laughs> Sir William was, um, yeah. believe it or not. You're the guinea pig today, <laughs> Sir William. Don't pay it. He was a uh, feral cat, and he socialized really well, really oh, quick. Um, we do socialize them and, you know, get them off of the streets and into he seems homes. He's very friendly. Very He's really, really friendly. He's a real sweetheart. Um, you know, some of his siblings were still working on. They're still a little hissy, a little growly. You know, are they you, have issues, but you know you, they. Are you smart enough uh, <laughs> not to go back in there, William? Uh, uh So little William is going to demonstrate. He's probably not going to like this, but he's going to go in that trap, and then he's going to step on that lever, uh, and we'll just kind of do it for him. He said. Once he that. steps on that, this is going to come down and trap the cat inside. Oh. So you have like your so. kitty. Um, you want to directly cover the trap up with the sheet to keep the cat calm. Um, and then you're going to put the trap in a remote location, like I said, um, you know, day, like, yeah. you know, away from the other cats. Therefore, they, you know, you could have a successful trap. Um, I usually, like I said, I do about 10 at a time, trap, neuter, release. Wow, um, I, a lot of work. It, I, yeah, I. <laughs> It, it takes all day, you know, I do about eight hours into okay. it. Um, in between my work schedule, you know, I will set up the traps, go to work, and then check, and then <laughs> go okay, back, okay, and then, you know, okay, go okay. check, and then I'm there all night monitoring traps. Okay. But um, one less cat out there breeding is makes me happy because there are way too many cats, and I originally started doing trap neuter release because, I, honestly, I got sick of seeing dead cats on our roadways. Okay. Um, so that's <laughs> little William, and then you would take your trapped okay. cat, Thanks you know, for being a good sport, buddy. To the veterinarian or low-cost clinic where they will, you know, spay and neuter the little kitty and vaccinate. Um, these cats do on out, buddy. need to be wormed. They do need to be flea treated. Um, all of our cats are flea treated and wormed. Sir so William is for adoption, and you can find us on PetFinder.com, uh, as well as all of our other cats and kittens for adoption. Um, I do recommend a lot of times people get a new kitty or a new puppy, and they do um, put a <laughs> collar on them. Um, I do recommend, in case they do get caught on something, a detachable collar, which if they got caught, 
the collar can easily be detached, therefore they're not strangling themselves. Um, I also recommend great free, uh, flea treatments. Uh, I personally use Frontline Plus. And um, proper grooming. <laughs> and proper grooming. Um, flea collars tend to really not do the job except for you'll find a bunch of fleas under the flea collar. There's a lot of cats in Scranton. Um, a lot of people are under the impression when they find a stray kitten <laughs> that the kitten's been dumped or somebody abandoned the kitten or tossed it out the window when in actuality it's stray cats and feral cats breeding. Um, I call them the nice feral cats, friendly cats. A lot of times people will have a litter on their front porch and that's when they'll start socializing them, but they won't do anything. They'll leave them there. They don't know what to do. Um, yeah. You know, you could, there's options available. Yeah, you so could, well, who can you call? If I if I've had a whole litter and I can't do anything with an entire litter, is there someone I can call? To um, you could either, one, take them to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter or any local shelter. You could call Animal Control. We do have an animal control officer in the city. Um, you could uh, contact rescue groups and see if they're able to take it. However, you know, kitten season, there's just kittens everywhere. Uh, cats and kittens do start breeding at four months of age. Four months, you hear that? With four <laughs> months. So you may look at a kitten and think, oh, that's a kitten, that kitten's breeding. Yep, two All to right? three litters a year uh, they could have. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely, you know, you take that one unfixed cat and then the next year you're going to have, you know, 16 more you know from the breeding on top of breeding their kittens breeding and their kittens breeding a lot of times I see kittens with kittens and they're all the same size so right. I mean there's it, it definitely you're saving a life if all you could do is just even spay or neuter that animal and I mean at least you're saving the lives of other animals um, you could contact rescue groups though or you could d take it upon yourself um, if you even have a dog crate or something you could put the kittens in um, at least to start getting the process and get them so they're not going to be wandering off to become street cats. There's a lot of dangers on the streets for these cats. It's not, it's not easy out there. A lot of times when people abandon their pets, it's not easy for a pet cat to jump that's, into a colony domesticated. of cats. Okay, they're domesticated. Okay, I They're They're struggling um, on the streets. So it, it's, you know, you have a colony of cats and you might have somebody feeding those cats, but if a pet cat wanders in, they're very territorial. They will, Attack oftentimes, they won't do well. Oh. So, you know, if, if even if you're thinking about abandoning your pet, it's please just do the right thing. And, and call uh, someone and get the help. Call someone, it's please. It's not simple. Pick um, up the phone. Uh, do the right thing. Microchip your pets. Put tags on them. And uh, remember, <laughs> remember, uh, <laughs> an animal is a living, breathing thing. That's it right. feels pain just like you feel pain. That's right. It, it needs water and food to eat and live. That's it's right. been an incredible experience having you on, Nancy. Thank you. I feel like the crocodile guy or something <laughs> right now. Like I learned so much about what you do and about the, the animals and. You know, they say you learn something every day, but I've learned a ton, of, a ton of things from you today, and I will be passing along my knowledge that I've picked up. And like I said, make sure you go to the website and donate. Help us out. Make sure we can help get the stray animals off the street and that we can do the right thing for the city. All right, guys? Thanks for tuning in to Northeast Current. See you next time. Stay and neuter your pets. <laughs>